This meeting is being recorded. Awesome, awesome. Okay, you guys, so um, uh, we are doing an impromptu training <laughs> slash Q&A um, with one of our newest diamonds, Jillian, and I know she's going for Diamond 2.0 on her spouse's account. Um, she's killing it with enrollments. She has been for a long time, but I kind of want to start at the beginning because I know that there's lots of newbies um, and kind of just share when you started, what it was like, where your enrollments first initially came from. We'll start with that first question. Okay, sure. Um, so I started uh, at the end of August of last year. Um, and then I didn't kind of really start posting or doing anything until mid-September. So that's kind of in my mind what, when I started. Um, so I only had 170 friends on Facebook when I started. Um, I used to never post anything ever. I used to share my story occasionally and that was it. But the only thing on my wall was like, happy birthday, Jillian, from like years and years and years past. Um, so it, I had to do like a total mind shift in order to like start posting, first of all. Um, and, you know, I started doing that training and I did like my first post to introduce myself to my network because honestly, they were probably going to be like, why are you suddenly posting all this stuff? Um, and then my very first leads came from my very first product post, which was a gummies post. Um, but they were the people that were in my immediate network that wanted to support me to help me launch my business. And maybe like weight loss wasn't their number one goal, but people were like, you know, um, can I have your link? Can I take a look at your website? Stuff like that. So those are my very first people that I got to talk to about the business. Um, and they were close friends and family members who bought off me my first, I think probably five or six, um, loyal customers at the time or PMs now. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what it was like, but it was a slow start for me because you have to expand your network and I had a very small network. So, um, I wasn't a, a big happer at the time. I didn't really want to ask people to post for me. And, um, because of those limitations, it did take me a little bit of time to get rolling until I was able to like open up my mind and be like, okay. You're going to have to like start doing these things that other people are saying work, even if you don't like doing them um, and see if they work for you too. I love that. I did not know that about you, that you had a small network. I just assumed because you, it's nice because you obviously have supportive friends that are like, I'm interested, like share me info. Like, you know, that you have a people that like trust you, that they would, you would be honest with them on, on things to, um, to try. Um, so I love that you shared that and know that not all of us do get that. Um, but it's awesome that it started off that way. And I also love that you shared that you're like, I don't want to do host to post because <laughs> I know me and you on the power hours are like, okay, let's rip off the bandaid and send the messages that you really don't want to. Um, but you're right. You know, that's where so much more of the growth comes quicker, especially if you have the small network. Um, so I want to ask you one quick question before we transition into, into really signing with ton of customers. Um, how did you sign your first distributor? So my first distributor was my spouse. Um, so that's kind of like me, but my next distributor after that. So um, I have a friend who lives in my former hometown who happened to um, cut. She kind of does her own like side nail business. And she'd always be posting on Facebook all the time about like, you know, here's a set of nails I did last year. Here's a set of nails I did the year before. And oh my God, these were my favorite ones. And I was like, this girl is like a social media queen. She's got her own little following of her nail customers who are regularly commenting on her posts. And I was like, um, and obviously like she's a friend of mine and I knew that she could use the extra money. So I went to her and I was like, like so I'm in this business um I think you should do it and I just kept messaging her and she was like I don't want to buy anything I don't want to I don't want to be a distributor but, but I will share a post for you I'm like okay cool so she shared a bunch of posts for me then she started posting to her story but then her network started being like what is this I want this and she was like 
She's like, okay, you've convinced me. So it did take a few follow-ups on my part to be like, you know, you should really be doing this business with me. But that, yeah, that's how I did. That's how I signed my first one. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. And um, a lot of that, just like you signed a, a DT today, I think from just reaching out to someone who you're like, I like their content. They should, they would totally do amazing at this. And just genuinely reaching, reaching out. Um, and it's funny that she said no. <laughs> so yeah. many people say no. So I want to let everybody know if you are getting the no's, just realizing that the more consistent you are with posting, if they're willing to host a post, you can ultimately, maybe they just want to be a customer. All of those people who initially say no because they're nervous and are skeptical will come around with being consistent and being um, master of follow-ups, which we're going to talk about after <laughs> two. Um, so you have completed almost six four and a friends already this month. Um, you're going on your second uh, bank of bonus. So just for anyone who is like, okay, I, I do get enrollments, but I really want to like, I want more. Um, how do you bring in, how do you bring in like the majority of your, um, your customers? We'll just do custom. Well, we can do customers and distributors at the same time. How you feel like haps, your posting, follow-ups, what works best? Okay, so um, this business has kind of like morphed as as I've gone. So um, because when I first started, I had such a tiny network, things that worked back then um, are not the same as things that work now. So of course, like haps are always going to be a thing. Like as much as I hate to admit it, haps are always going to be like the best way to get your network larger, but also to like um, get you know, awareness about the products and stuff. Like I'd never heard of it works before, um, before Shannon messaged me being like, I'm a networks distributor. I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Um, and I just think, cause we're relatively newer in Canada that that could be the case with a lot of people. Um, uh, so like haps are definitely the way to go as far as expanding your network and stuff. Um, but also when I was kind of newer, I had to do a lot of cold messaging. Um, and that is something I wasn't afraid to do. It did take a little bit of courage to work up to it, but I just told myself that the worst thing that can happen is that somebody says no or F off or blocks me. And I was like, you know what, if that happens, then I will move on to the next person. So I had to kind of like, just look at it, like from a, thick skin standpoint like it's not the end of the world if somebody blocks you um so cold messaging is how I actually brought a whole bunch of people onto my follow-up list originally and I've had this like growing follow-up list ever since I started doing that um of course every day I post okay I post multiple times a day I share my story multiple times a day um and so as I'm adding these people to my network they're, you know, watching my story, they're seeing my posts and whatever. Um, and then, you know, doing some interactive posts here and there allows people to like comment on something on your wall that maybe isn't business related. And then it gives me the opportunity to then directly message that person and reach out to them because they're interacting on my wall. And so it's not so much of a cold message anymore. Um, but now, like nowadays, it's really about being extremely consistent, um, doing the tasks on the days when you really don't want to, um, trying to attend the power hour if you can. Like Grace and I are having a battle at noon every day where I just cannot get through an entire power hour. But I've noticed that she naps between like 11 a.m. and noon. So I'm kind of doing my own mini power hour during that time because I've attended enough of them to know what are the tasks going to be? There are going to be send distributor messages, post your story, post your wall, um, send messages for haps, check your haps, boost your haps, all that stuff. So doing that every day is um, really what is making my business thrive, honestly, and following up, of course. <laughs> um, and I'm glad that you, I'm glad that you brought that up because I was going to ask you when you're following up, because I know that you have your list. Okay, quick, quick, one quick question, because I know you said when you started, you cold messaged, because you didn't have a ton of friends. So where were you cold messaging from? So I was adding people every single day. And then as my network continued to grow by like, say, 
10 friends a day or five friends a day or however many actually accepted my ad, um, I would sort my friends list and see who was the newest friend. I would go into their profile and I would creep their profile and I would decide if I was going to offer them the opportunity or if I was going to offer them to be a product reviewer based on what I saw in their profile. And if they responded to me, they were immediately on the follow-up list. So if they said, what is it? What do you do? If they ask me a question, if they say, maybe they're on the follow-up list. And um, if they're not interested in either being a distributor or a product reviewer, I'm asking them to post for me. And if they straight up say, no, 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 then I'm going to stop bothering them and move on to the next person <laughs> for, yeah. for all of that. And those people that you're adding, are they from HAPS? Are they from friends of friends? Are, where were you initially growing your network from? So um, I, when I first started, I asked Shannon, I was like, I don't know where I'm going to find people. And she was like, hey, join some groups on Facebook. So I joined like a couple of local moms groups and stuff. And um, I started posting in them relatively regularly so that I was active in that group and so I wasn't just like a random to people um and then that way when people started interacting on my posts which were legitimate like concerns and questions I had then I could add them um and they're more likely to add me back and then they're also more likely to respond to me when I message them um I also had to be okay with adding people I didn't know. So my, the reason my Facebook list was so small is because I was extremely private. Um, I did not want to share anything about myself with anybody. I did not want to have anyone on my friends list that I didn't know that could potentially threaten my security in some way. Like I was like, totally like, oh my God. So I had to be totally like, go 180 opposite direction and be like all right you're gonna have to add people that you do not know and like you're gonna have to be okay with them seeing your life on Facebook (laughs) and I it's funny because I was such a chicken you are so much braver than me right away it took me months (laughs) of being like I will add five people a day because just like you said I'm like they're strangers on Facebook. It was just like when people started online dating, I'm like, isn't that dangerous? Like you're meeting a stranger. Mm -hmm. Obviously there's like Tinder and all the things now, but like when you first start the business, it's scary to add people you don't know because you're like, who the heck are these people? Um, But my girlfriend, I just remember one of the things that helped me get over that hump was she said, if you had a traditional business, a clothing store, a restaurant, anything, there would be so many strangers coming into your store. And it's not like you have to see them in person. They're usually across like provinces. So like, what are you going to do? They're probably just going to block, you You know what I mean? Just like what you said, like, and if you're a real genuine person, it's not that bad. You're essentially just posting. You can choose to make your posts private instead of public. Um, I didn't make my posts public for a long time because again, I was super scared. So I'm glad you realized that early and you were like, hey, we're just going to do it. (laughs) I added five people a day for a month. (laughs) Why is my maximum amount of people? I was so nervous. Um, so that's great. I I love those tips. And I didn't u- utilize groups and things like that, but I know a lot of people do. And it is a really smart way to build people that have common interests in you that are local or however that you want to do it. I think that's awesome. Yeah. We pivot. Um, okay. So um, so when you are generating leads. And you're following up with people because I know you said they go on your list. Um, how frequently do you message them? Do you have like a messaging system? Is it always like, you know, the follow up about the product? Do you check in personally, go and comment on their page? Like, what are you doing to like build that relationship? Or are you just like messaging them to like check in? What's your system? So um, it's actually, again, it's changed. Um, and the reason it's changed is because when I first had a smaller follow-up list, it was way easier to manage. Um, Now that it is like massive, and I'm not even joking, you're like, I do not have enough hours to go through the number of people on that list. Um, It's like, I have to do it a different way. So my initial initial way of doing things were, um, I had my spreadsheet where I just list everyone's names. 
And I have that little book thing that Shannon likes to give as a prize, the day planner book. Um, and I started using that so that when I initiated like new conversations and people and I were talking, I'd write down their name in the book. So I knew what day we spoke on. And then I would be able to kind of jump back the, the following day and speak with the people I was just talking to the day before um, or, or the day before that, right? Because if somebody's like fresh in your mind, you want to keep them fresh in your mind. Like you don't want them to like forget that you guys were even having a conversation. Um, so, and I still do that just in a different way. And then um, I had a system before where I would follow up like um, one to two days, once a week after a couple weeks after that, and then a month after that, and then two months after that. And, and the whole system has broken down at this point because I have, um, I think I have 600 names on my follow-up list or something stupid. Like, I don't even know. And it's because I, I, I don't know if maybe it's because I view somebody as a lead more so than somebody else might view somebody as a lead. Like if someone says something to me, like, nice. I'm like, you're a lead. Like, and I'm going to follow up with you. <laughs> so um, I might be a, a bit more aggressive than some people. But um, so now what I do is I still have my book. I'm still writing down names every day when I get um, new conversations. But if I get behind, that's when I'm going to get in trouble. Because if I'm sending out a gazillion hat messages, then I'm going to be 400 messages deep in my inbox and trying to figure out who I was talking to last. Um, so I really try and like stay on top of that. And then if I don't have time to get those names into my spreadsheet because I'm too busy, then I have to do that like on a weekly basis now where I go through my whole book, I slam all those names into my spreadsheet and then I'm double checking to make sure I've followed up with everybody on that list while I'm putting them into my spreadsheet. Then in my spreadsheet, I have a date on there saying date of uh, most recent follow-up so that I don't have to go into the conversation and figure it out. So I've got it right in front of me. Um, I also make a little note next to their name. What were we talking about? Or was there something specific I should try to remember? Like they get paid on this day and said to check in on this day or they're partners in the hospital and they need to wait till month end or so that I don't have to like scroll through the whole conversation to figure out, you know, I can just touch base. Um, and then when I go to do follow-ups, I have to do them in big follow-up mass messaging chunks. Um, so I will look at my spreadsheet. I'll see when's the last time I followed up with this person based on what I wrote on the sheet. And then I go back a couple of weeks right now. So I'm a couple of weeks behind in follow-ups and I'm messaging all of those people. And sometimes I'm writing them a personalized message based on our conversation, but other times I'm sending a voice note because it's faster. <laughs> and um, I can quickly reference a couple of points that we made in our personal conversation so that they feel heard and understood and um, it's more personalized for them. Um, and I find that people are a lot more likely to respond up in a positive way to that personalized message and um, they are less likely to leave you on red. So, um, and, and obviously when we have an enrollathon like this month, we had the power protein enrollathon, which was totally out of nowhere. And then now we've got this formula FF one. Mm -hmm. Um, so having two in one month, traditionally for me in the past, like I've never been a big enroller during enrollathons. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I was already so on top of my follow-ups that I didn't want to follow up with these people again and like torment them 24 seven because I was always in their inbox. Right. Um, but because my system now I'm a couple of weeks behind, it's actually working out a bit better for me because I can like just mass message those people that I haven't talked to in a little bit longer and they seem to be more receptive than when I'm just like, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> yeah, gives them a little bit of a break for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, and I don't do a spreadsheet, but I like how you put notes and then you customize it. I think a lot of people too, one, you're taking the time to 
send them a voice note and it's personal. It's like if someone printed you off a piece of paper that said, thank you so much for your service or whatever, or if they like hand wrote you a note or something, it's like, oh, and then you like signed it. It's so much more personal when it's like a copy and paste message. It's not the same when it's a voice note too. I feel like it almost creates that FOMO of like, what is she saying? I want to listen to it. <laughs> um, and then they can hear your voice. They can hear your excitement. They can hear you versus like just a typed out message. Um, so I love, I just love voice notes there. They're my jam. Um, I love that you're just keeping track. I think that's probably one of the biggest ones. And I'm the same. Sometimes when follow-ups come, it's like, well, I've already done, like, you're so consistent with it that you don't, you don't need a, a necessarily an enroll-a-thon. It's great for those people who are like teetering on the edge of like getting started when you go like, Hey, guess what? I know you wanted to like, now's the time. Um, I love that. Okay. So perhaps I know that you're using, um, a lot because I see your screenshots and you always win my contests. Um, so do you have like specific host to post that you use? Do you switch them up? Um, do you do rotate like product giveaway distributor or do you just like stick to products? Like what's your hat kind of. Okay. So, no. um, as I've expanded my network to be, I'm like just over 2000 or something followers now, which is like, I can't even believe that's possible. I remember you, I used to see Crystal's uh, follow up thing and I was like, or her, um, her followers. And I was like, why does she have so many? Uh, I, I don't know. It used to like freak me right out. Um, so now that I have like quite a few people, it is a bit easier for me to get comments on my own giveaway posts on my wall, which then allows me to ask those people to have for me. But when I was first starting out, I was noticing like all the same people were always commenting and like the same people would post for me all the time. And I was like, um, so what I did to get out of that, um, was I, I started at the beginning of the month, especially doing giveaway posts like crazy because we've just had our cash giveaway. It's right pinned to the top of my page on my wall showing somebody just won money. Um, it explains the whole process. So if someone's skeptical about posting for me, they literally just go to my page and watch the video. It's right there. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to send out a gazillion giveaway posts to start my month off so that I have dozens and dozens of people to ask to share a post for me. And hopefully out of those people, I'm going to get like, 10 people who actually post because you know it's going to take a lot of asks to get the haps up um so I start like that and then a way that I build momentum through the month is doing the power hour so I go to the power hour I know I've got like three or four giveaway posts up that are like getting lots of comments and we know that we're going to have like eight to like 15 minutes in the power hour to like mass message everyone that's on a giveaway post. And it's going to take me being told by you to, <laughs> to do that <laughs> so, because I don't like doing it. So if I am told Jillian, send out a bunch of hat messages, I'm like, okay. And if you're like Jillian, let's compete and see who sends the most. I'm like, oh my God, that's even better. So I'm going to go send out a whole whack of them there. And then as I'm getting the yeses back, um, I start looking at the goals that I've set for myself for that month. So um, for example, last month I had like a thing on my wall showing how many customers I wanted to sign, how many distributors I wanted to sign. Um, and every time I signed one of them, I would check it off, check it off, check it off. And um, now this month, I because they changed the whole system, I was like, okay, you're going to be wanting to work for these builder bonuses now. So how many customers do you need? Because we know that you're not always going to just have four that add up to 300 volume. You might have like five that add up to 300 volume. So I'm like, hey, how many customers realistically do you need? How many distributors do you need? And then um, what are you going to do to get those builder bonuses? So based on that, I will use that. Oops. I don't know what I just did. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> um, you're good. I, yeah. <laughs> I will use um, that opportunity to be like, okay, so I want to start off this month strong with customer enrollments. Let's get some product posts up. I'm going to do 
gummies. I'm going to do the four skinny gummies, two vegan tablets. So um, when you said last month it was blowing up for you, I'm like, I am stealing that because the one without the vegan in it still works really well. But when you said that one was working, I'm like, no. So paying attention to what other leaders are sharing that's working for them is definitely important. Um, and then, so I'm getting up a couple of product posts, but then here and there, I'm also checking people's walls to see like, what do I think they would share for me? Um, what what do I think they'd be comfortable sharing? Because I do have a lot of people that are not into the whole weight loss supplement thing and that are like against sharing um, weight loss supplement posts. And so I always like double check the wall and see what kind of stuff they have on there and kind of make a judgment. And then I'll give them a cleanse one or I'll give them like, I'll make my own greens one, like just something to get it out there, right? And like, yeah. Um, and then once I start getting these product posts up and getting some comments on them, um, I also really like to boost them. I didn't used to do that before. And oh, wow, I learned that in Power Hour too. So, <laughs> so yeah, I didn't even know that was a thing. And um, so now boosting them has been really helpful as well because it brings it back to the top of people's news feeds and then more people are commenting and blah, blah, blah. So, um, but when momentum slows down, then I'm like, okay, I need more giveaway posts. Let's go do this. Um, and then this month, uh, I don't traditionally get distributor haps up that much, but this month I have been like freaking pushing for these distributors, like as hard as I can and sending so many messages and I'm like I'm gonna have to change something up I'm gonna have to get some distributor hops up and I did end up getting a whole bunch of leads from those as well so yeah sweet I love that and when you told me you didn't know how to do a collection and I'm like were you diamond or something and you're like I just found out how to do collections I was just <laughs> like holy cow you must have been scrolling forever it was um, horrible it was horrible <laughs> yeah um, shoot, what was I going to say? You had so many great tips there. Um, when you're doing your giveaway hops, is there like a certain one that you find works best? Is it? Yeah. Or um, do you like rotate? So, um, I have had lots of great success with the grandma's name one, but I also have had other issues with the grandma's name one. So it's kind of like, I have to check their network out a bit. And so, because I've had some people be like, this is a scam to get, um, you know, personal information. I've had scammers comment on it and message all of my people. Um, and so I, I am very wary of using that one. And I find it's a little bit safer if I'm nervous to use like the cheese goes with, you can't say crackers or peanut butter goes with, you can't say bread. Um, and then also, if I know the person that's posting for me versus like not knowing them, um, sometimes people in my network really don't like the whole like vaguely saying we're doing a cash giveaway. So I'll change up the bottom part of it to say, um, tell me to get entered in my friend Jillian's giveaway, like straight up, not like my friend Jillian is giving away three prizes of $100 or whatever. It's like, tell me. So you have a chance to get entered so that they know someone's coming to them to message them. Um, so that's what I've been doing. And then um, as far as other giveaway ones, I've experimented with like every single giveaway one out there. And it can honestly just depend on the network. Like I know the Thunder Bay people, they're all like Tim Hortons lovers. So I love doing the Tim Hortons versus Starbucks one there because they're all like, ah, Tim Hortons. Ah. Um, and I've also been like kind of trying to make up my own little giveaway ones here and there. I'm just trying to think of stuff that goes with stuff and what could I like, hmm, what goes with this and what lots of stuff could go with that. Hmm. And then I was like macaroni. I'm like, people like mac and cheese. And so it's almost like cheese goes with, but it's mac and cheese goes with. And now you're going to get a whole bunch more comments. So, yeah. Oh, gosh. My husband would be all over that. He loves mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he would make a list. Um, okay, so I know that we wanted to keep this around kind of 30 minutes. 
Um, and you've given so many tips already. So how, I know that you said that you have your wall. Um, do you want to share with us kind of like what your goal is for the month and how you break it down into like daily activity. You have sent like a certain amount of hats, certain amount of messages. How do you go yeah. about setting those goals? Okay. Well, when they came out with this new program this month, um, it, my goal stayed very similar to last month, but it was just in a different way. So the way that I look at it is just based on the last few months in the business, I try to like anticipate, you know, there's always going to be a couple of customer declines. There's always going to be a couple of people that cancel their orders. Okay. Like it's inevitable. Um, we can be the best customer service people in the universe and stuff is going to happen. Um, so I look at how much do I think I need as far as volume based on what I anticipate there's not going to be volume from those things. So like, I'm like, okay, you know, let's just say I have 2000 volume shortfall because of all this all over my chart from all the people that decline or um, don't do another order. Then I'm like, okay, how many customers does that break down to? So last month and this month, I set a goal of um, 40 new customers for the month, which is more than one a day. Um, and I know that usually traditionally enrollments are um, a lot heavier in the second half of the month. Um, for, for some reason this month, that was an anomaly for me, but usually I can have like crickets chirping for the first two weeks and then just like insanity for the last two weeks. So, um, you know, it doesn't have to be one customer sale every single day, but I want it to be averaging more than one a day. So if I get into my first week and I've only signed like two customers, then I'm kind of like, okay, we got to like step up the haps a bit more. We got to like do whatever. Um, and then, sorry. <laughs> We're almost done. We're almost done. <laughs> um, so then, um, so I set the goal of about 40 customers and I figure that if X amount of people cancel, X amount of people's decline, um, I can still maintain or even possibly promote by having that many enrollments, depending on how the team is doing and how my coaching has been I'm working with the other girls on the team. Um, you know, we should all still be able to, you know, kick, kick this month's butt. So then I looked at the builder bonus thing and it was like, well, if you do three tier ones and you sign, you know, your three distributors, you're going to get this builder bonus. And I'm like, okay, well, if I'm going to try and sign 40 customers, I try and break down how many, I think that's going to work out to into the customer bonus. So if I'm being very um, generous to myself, I'm going to do like, you know, eight customer bonuses. And that's like hoping that the BB is high enough for each customer bonus. Um, so I set the goal for myself at nine distributors, because if I do eight customer bonuses, if I sign nine distributors and I can push really hard for that last customer bonus and try and get three of those builder bonuses before month end. Um, and I did that before I started signing customers at the beginning of the month, not knowing like what was going to happen. And I'm like, that's a really big goal, but I'm fine with chasing that, um, you know, and right now I have tons of customers, but I'm really still trying to find some distributors and it's not always going to work out exactly how you want it to. Um, but that's what I'm doing. And I know that I have to do definitely a couple of straight hours of like messaging every day. Um, whether that's asking for haps, whether that's following up, um, whether that's reaching out to people randomly, like it's going to take a couple of straight hours of messaging every day. And then the rest of the time, like just attending the power hours, posting regularly um, and checking in with my team regularly, trying to help them um, with what they're working on. Um, I do a lot of like motivational stuff with my team so that, um, you know, I'm like, okay, the next person that signs a, a, a perks member I'm going to move some volume anywhere you want it on your chart. And then they're like, Ooh, I know I need a hundred volume on this distributor to make them qualified. So then they're like, Hmm. Um, so then they're competing against each other and they're like, yeah, let's do this. Um, I also 
make deals with other distributors saying, you know, if you sign a distributor, I'll move another one under you and let's box you for Ruby, Emerald, wherever it is they're trying to like take themselves. Um, and so I know that as long as I'm consistently enrolling, I can keep the promises I'm making to those distributors because if I don't have the enrollment sitting in my uh, personally enrolled team section, I can't really move anything. So I better be enrolling and I better be leading from the front so I can, so I can do that for them too. Um, so yeah. <laughs> okay, so last question. I am, I'm stealing that. Um, I like how you like, you're like, okay, next, you know, I'm going to move that. I'm going to move that volume next person who gets a customer. Cause they literally only have like 48 hours essentially to sign a customer so you can move it. Exactly. Um, we're going to be doing a training with Shannon next week. Date to be determined. She's going to be going over duplication and ranking up. And I know Jillian just gave you the basics to help you start that. My very last question is, do you have any tips for enrolling distributors? Because I know last month you were the top distributor enroller on our whole, in my whole entire downline, you were <laughs> the top distributor enroller. Um, and I think you're super close to it this month. So do you have any tips for people who might be struggling signing DTs? Um, I offered the opportunity to like any person that posts for me, to any person that tells me they can't afford the product, to any person that I see um, that they're posting on their wall about being uh, struggling financially, struggling with like mental health problems, struggling with anything. Um, I just know the opportunity has helped so many people and that like, if I can let them know about it at the very least, then that starts the conversation. Um, and then, yeah, just, just going from there and following up all the time, like all the time. Yeah. Love it. Um, well, I just want to say, I know that you're busy and <laughs> you've got another thing going on right after this. I want to say thank you for taking the time to share all of your tips. Like it means a lot. Um, I hope, I know that people walked away with tips cause I did, and I've been doing this for freaking ever. So I want to say thank you. <laughs> um, and I know you're going to hit your goal this month. I totally know it. So. Thanks Thank for having too. me. I appreciate it. <laughs> and have a good night, everybody. Thank you for hopping on last minute. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Bye.